first leg go in reverse order these really are the skiers that are in contention for the medals disappointing to see neureuter so far off the pace 21st position for felix is a huge disappointment for the german number one clearly suffering from sore back problems now one or two new names breaking into the top flight uh, simon mauerberger from team italy on track for a huge pb here but then we get to the last page and these are the skiers all within a second of marcel hirscher all with a shot at a medal just less than half a second for the top five skiers christopherson olsen of norway and sweden pantero for france schergofer and uh, hirscher last of the top 30. and i must remind you there are no team rules in alpine skiing ski racing Schirchhofer will be trying as hard as everyone else in the top 30 to try and steal that gold from Marcel Hirscher Finley are you been up on the track taking a close look at the rhythm and pattern of turns uh, Schlivenik uh, one of the Austrian tech coaches has set the new pattern of turns tell us more snow and rhythm how what are we going to get yeah, the second run is more technical. There's a couple of hidden things in there that you need to be aware of. There's really high speed turns and then there's big long turns with the fallaway. So the hill's trying to pull the racers out of position and out of the line. So expect to see some big recoveries in those sections, especially the felts and there's more speed in there this run. And then there's a really big drop off. So they're really going to have to ski tactically more aware. I mean, look, Marcel Hersher is very good at that. Well, I would imagine Slivenik has tried his best within the rules and regulations to set the best possible course to complement the Austrian style and technique. But when you tell me, <coughs> excuse me, that the course is quite fast in places, surely that will be a benefit for Pantoro rather than Hirscher. Yeah, and set in those sections, but it's then how you tactically change from those fast turns into the tighter, more aggressive turns. And we know that Marcel Hirscher has all the power in the world to get his skis to come around. Now, a snowstorm is predicted to uh, start later this afternoon, but it looks like it will not start snowing here until we're done with the second run of this men's giant slalom. The snow is warming just a little, but still a very demanding, high-speed, icy giant slalom racetrack. Second run of the men's giant slalom here in St. Moritz gets underway with that... Ryan Cochran at Siegel. No Ted Ligeti, the defending champion and the winner of this gold medal for the past three championships. He also took the Olympic gold in between two of them. But uh, the Americans will turn now to uh, Ryan. Uh, one of two American skiers to make the top 30 cut for this second leg. First look at the course, Finley looks a little tighter on the Feltson than it was for the first leg. Yeah, and that turn, that right footer onto that rise is the real key gate because you're coming in there with more speed than last run and you've got to fight all the strength against the hill. The hill is trying to pull you away and you've got to fight against that. Another blind breakaway. You have to have absolute confidence. Be really positive with your approach to those blind gates as the terrain changes. Now, coming into the lower part of the challenge, this was key on run one, and it looks just as technical on run two. Yeah, some bigger turns in the uh, flatter sections. You need to generate the speed across the flats. And uh, Ryan Cochran Siegel for the USA sets the pace at 2 minutes 16, spot 1-1. One, one. Yeah, just really being aggressive. That right blend of aggression on the gates without getting trapped inside the gates. Well, the early starters of the top 30 in reverse must take full advantage of the smooth racetrack. Tying for 28th position is uh, Eric Reed for Canada. The son of the great Ken Reed, five times a World Cup winner and longtime president of the uh, Canadian Ski Association. And Eric Reed is doing just as we said, really charging on these top turns, high, smooth and clean in the new turn, but really taking advantage of a slick, smooth track. No bumps, no judders, no ruts. Yeah, he really took a lot of speed out the felts and across the flats. And now after Murray, staying ahead of it, but it changes here. This is where it starts to turn. This is where you tactically have to change, especially because the legs are really burning at two runs over 2,000 meters in altitude. 
28th in this race two years ago in Beaver Creek, Colorado. 215.52 could put Eric Reed into the top 20 here in 2017. He's got such a beautiful technique. So strong with the lower body and calm with the upper. Felix Neureuter watches on for Germany. Clearly not at his best this morning. Looks very stiff in the lower back. But before we go to Neureuter, let's take a look at the Norwegian tying with Eric Reid for 28th position. Uh, this is uh, Bjorn Netterland. 16th in the Alpine combined, 25th in the Super G. He's out of sorts and loses the race line on those opening turns. And the light quickly turns from green to red. It's so rare that we see people in Giants on getting compressed from a compression where it goes from steep to flat. But yet he was doing that. It's so fast down off the felt and he was just a little bit out of balance. And the skis hooked up right underneath him and almost threw him off the front seat. Same thing's happening again. He's getting a little low and late in the race line there is no room to rest on this uh, second leg set by the slovenian but austrian tech coach slivenik and uh, 0.61 off the pace uh, bjorn netteland goes at third and that's a compression there from bjorn the head so low down and lucky to recover he got thrown much further left than he expected and that's where he lost a lot of that speed well, Canada lead, and Canada will be next uh, in the gate. This is uh, Philip Brown, a 25-year-old uh, from Toronto, has a one world championship medal against his name in the team event of uh, 2015, where Canada took silver. Oh, and it looks like Phil Brown's in trouble too. Phil Brown is uh, down and out. A DNF for the Canadian. That's exactly where we were talking about. The second steep of the felts, and it's coming in faster into there. And his body was so far inside that the hand catching on the ground, just unable to recover. Well, Eric Reeds for Canada. He's just had to watch his teammate Phil Brown crash out. But so far, so good. 25th position now from the first leg is uh, Andreas uh, Zampa. Sadly, his uh, older brother, Adam Zampa, unable to compete at these uh, championships. But uh, Andreas... He's got some GS form. He was 32nd in the Olympic Games. He was 40th in the Alpine combined. But a good ski here could give uh, Andreas Zampa, the younger of the brothers, a nice PB. Yeah, Andreas is just so dynamic. He puts so much pressure onto that edge, but not enough right there. That's a big mistake going down, and that's the first pitch of the Felsen. Loses all of the speed, uh, grinds to a halt just goes through the control gate which allows the uh, Slovakian racer to continue with his challenge and of course the uh, Slovakian National Ski Association still enjoying their success in the team event 48 hours ago where they took the silver up against France in that uh, explosive finale just struggling now Zampa, he's lost his confidence he's lost the focus on the racing line does well to finish but a long way down off the pace yeah we see the timing getting a little bit wrong he's trying to over ski with the upper body and when the upper body gets ahead of the lower body you get everything going inside and that's why he lost the outside edge there on Phelps and just sneaking around the gate to stay in the course but frustrating not only for him Now, so good to see a Dutch skier make the top 30. This is at Martin Miners, 25 years of age. Trains with the German team. Oh, and the Dutch dream is over. He's from one of uh, Holland's most famous ski racing clubs, where uh, Ferdinand Hirscher used to be one of the coaches. Uh, that's half of uh, Hirscher's uh, family line. He's half Dutch and half Austrian. But what a disappointment for Martin. Chance of glory is gone. Yeah, such a shame. Harold Mann, a great uh, friend of mine, is his coach, and he's flying in such confidence after that first run. Look at bib number 49 making it all the way into the top 30, but couldn't get to grips on the second steep of the Felton. 
Big cheer for the Swiss racer in the gate. This is uh, Loic Meyer, the older brother to Melanie Meyer, who came 13th in the women's giant slalom uh, here yesterday. 24th position for the young Swiss racer after the first leg. Beautiful turns at the top, taking the most of speed out of that pitch. And what I really like about him is how quick he gets that hip down into the turn, and that's why he gets the green light to point one two to the advantage. But these are the key turns. He spent most of his junior career finishing behind Christofferson in the World Juniors. He has a similar style to Christofferson and technique uh, over those Rossi skis. He's got a PB of 12th position on the World Cup Tour. Now the youngster needs to show that he's got some strength and power and finish this as sharply as he started. We're coming in off the Rominger and it gets turnier again. So far, we're seeing him back to the green. 500. Really strong lower down, but starting to get a little bit thrown and wild when you see the skis in the air like that. He's got the Swiss fans on their feet. Can uh, Loic Meyer not only take the lead, but finish higher than his younger sister? Tenth of a second with the green light puts Switzerland into the lead. And that's exactly what we wanted to see from Loic, his commitment through those lower turns. The legs are burning, your lungs feel like they're going to come through your mouth. But he held his form and deservedly put Switzerland into top position. Really absorbing onto the steep of the second part of Phelps in there. That's why he was able to get the grip. He ran a little bit late in the line, but made it back up in the lower section. First of the French racers, 23rd position, and just three hundredths of a second advantage is Steve Massillier from uh, Le Grand Bonheur, a beautiful skier. Got some form against his name. Let's not forget that the Missile, as they nickname him on the tour, took the Olympic silver back in 2014. And, of course, the man who took the gold was Ted Shred, Mr. Ligeti himself. Yeah, this is looking very strong here for Massillier. He really was able to manage to get the speed going off, and he stays in the green very smooth from one edge to the other looking balanced lovely wide open stance over the skis that allows him to work that fire generate the pressure against the edge and that's got to be the secret for Massillier who takes the lead by over a quarter of a second lovely technique from Steve Massillier smooth fluid flowing turns from start to finish and that's a nice ski that could be a big result for the missile So good to see Finland in the chase for this uh, second leg and uh, 20 second spots and six hundredths of a second is what Samu Torsti brings. Oh, Samu, what a disappointment. Kali Palander, Finland's last world champion, that was in slalom. And we've been seeing Kali on inspection, helping out with the team, but just getting hooked up on the inside ski with this aggressive snow, throwing his hip out the turn. Well, there'll be a hold yeah, in the uh, race proceedings due to uh, Samu smashing through a couple of the control gates on some of the steepest sections of the racetrack here. Uh, the uh, marshals will need crampons or pretty sharp skis to replace those gates. Now, German flags are flying high. One or two of them with Felix written on them. Neureuter, next man in the gate. 21st position uh, after the opening leg is certainly not what we're used to you can see the snowflakes also starting to fall at the top of the men's start of this uh, giant slalom it's a 355 meter vertical drop from start to finish but i think one of the key characteristics to this race finley they started over 2385 meters and dropped down to 2000 meters it's a real physical test as well as the skiing skills 
Yeah, trying to get the oxygen into the system to allow the legs to have the power at the end is a real challenge, and that's why they do all that hard training in summer months, especially at altitude. Well, uh, Noi Reuters' uh, parents are in the crowd. Rosie Mittermeier, double Olympic champion in 1976, and Felix's father, Christian Noi Reuter, six times a World Cup slalom. He lives in uh, Partenkirchen, part of the uh, former World Championship resort of Garmisch. Parton Kirken, but it was the back injury that he picked up in the team event that niggled him on the first. Let's see if he can try and make amends here on the second as the forecast to snowstorm just starts to flurry at the top of the track. Yeah, Felix being explosive out the gate, and in the first one we saw him be quite calm and controlled with his upper body. So far, so good for him. Really clean to that new turning ski. Looking more dynamic. This run really quickly into the tuck there. Lovely opening section from the German. Let's not forget that he's got uh, five top ten results in giant slalom from uh, seven races. He did struggle in the first run and leaves the harder turns to get that strength and power going. You need to be fluid with the movement and he looked a little bit stiff again down there. It's the terrain changes where the body needs to flex and extend, particularly the legs, where he just looks to be a little bit slow. There's just something niggling in the back of his mind and we can see that from his technique, Finley. Yes, yeah, just a slight bit of caution when the wrist comes up there, but he is throwing caution to the wind now. These are the lower turns where he can make it back up again. And Neu Reuter should, by the full book, take the lead easily from 21st position. But can he put down a charge to claim a medal? I don't believe that will be good enough. So good for Neu Reuter to be out there today. Such good news for his fans around the world. But unfortunately for Neu Reuter, physically not at his strongest today. And that will show when we get to the final result. Neureuter, the new leader, 20 skiers still left to go, each and every one of them with an advantage over the German leader, and to put it in perspective, uh, Neureuter, 1.79 seconds behind Marcel Hirscher after the first leg, that's an eternity in uh, giant slalom race terms. The Italian skier, Manfred Mold, is next on course. We pick up Manfred lower down on the flat after the felts and making some good work of the flats, really using the upper body to drive through the turn. And then the Rominger jump. This is the last bit of steep you get before the finish. You need to make the best of it, but he's not making the best of it in time. Point two six behind now. And uh, Mold, a very experienced racer, took the World Cup slalom title as far back as 2008. But... Uh, the first scalp goes to Neureuter. Mold can only manage third position. Massinier is second for the French team. And Neureuter still at the top of the table. Simon Mauerberger, 19th fastest from the first leg, over a quarter of a second the advantage. We're watching this snowstorm very carefully, it's starting to gather momentum, particularly at the top of the track. Uh, Finley, this young lad was one of the late qualifiers for the Italian uh, GS team. 15th position in Garmisch uh, three weeks ago now from a start number of 42, sealed the fourth spot for this uh, young Italian, just 21 years of age. Yeah, great experience, but it doesn't matter about experience right now. He's got to be much cleaner on the turning ski, getting a little bit thrown up in the air, and for me, just a little bit pinching in the line. And what I mean by that is going a little bit too straight at some of these gates. Yeah, and too straight means you have to make a correction if the gamble doesn't pay off. Another scalp to Neureuter. Mauerberger into sixth position. The German total time of 2.14.93 still has Felix just at the top.
Switzerland in the gate again. 18th position for Gino Cavietzel after the first leg. Healthy advantage over Neureuter at 0.36 of a second. He's determined to get into the shake-up here as his big brother Mauro Cavietzel uh, picked off a bronze medal in the Alpine combined races here last week. Yeah, looking good, carrying good speed onto the flats. He lost a little bit on Felton, but we can see him being so dynamic with the upper body. That's the amount of athletic movement you have to create to accelerate across these flats. A little bit straight after the Rominger jump, had a slight correction in line. The Swiss fans don't care about that. All they can see is the green light. Now, has he got strength in the legs to maintain this momentum in the closing turns? Gino Cavietzo looks to have got the better of Neureuter by just eight hundredths of a second. Switzerland back into the lead. Gino Cavietzo on track for a PB in World Championship competition here. 25th in this race two years ago. That could be comfortably inside the top 20 for Cavietzo. So good to see David uh, Trudensky for Team USA make 17th position. Trudensky, who is the last of the top 30 ranked racers, is perhaps more better known as a slalom racer on the tour than for his giant slalom skills. But he's showing his class here. Nice and high and early in the racing line, giving himself plenty of time to set up the new turn, hold the rhythm, and making it look very easy with this approach to the race. Yeah, he increases his advantage now as well. He took so much speed off the, the bottom end of Felton, and now lower down, he's starting to look a little bit tired. The ski's coming into the air in some of these turns. Tends to throw the arm above the head. But uh, good work from Trudensky. The USA into the lead. And in the absence of the defending champion, Ted Ligeti, finally the American fans have reason to smile. A massive PB and giant slalom on the cards for Dave Trudensky. We're moving things along as quick as we can. We're a little late here in San Moritz. The snowstorm is gathering pace, and the former Olympic and world giant slalom champion, Carlo Janka, is next on course. Carlo took gold in this race back in 2009 in Val d'Isere, a year later, Olympic gold in on Whistler Mountain, part of the Vancouver Games of 2010. Yeah, we know Carlo's got the greatest touch on his skis, but he's looking a little bit plastered in these turns. He's not putting as much drive into the ski, and that's why we're seeing the light turn red and turn red by 0.52 now. It just doesn't seem to be as explosive as we've seen him in the past, and now running low again in the right foot undergate. This is the last race of the championships for Carlo Janka, and I have to say it has been a championships of frustration. Eighth in the Super G, 28th in the downhill, seven in the Alpine combined and now seventh in the men's uh, giant slalom but with still 15 races to go yeah, such steep turns down here in the felts and to try and stay feet on the ground is so hard fighting against the hill and the hill springs you up into the into the air Dave Trudensky leads for the USA but the 15 fastest from the first leg will come up next in this men's giant slalom race Welcome back to uh, St. Moritz at the halfway point in the second run of the men's giant slalom world championship competition. Uh, Dave Trudensky leads for the United States of America, comfortably ahead of Gino Cavietzel and Felix Neureuter, clearly not at full fitness, is in third position for Germany. Uh, there are still 15 skiers to make their challenge, each and every one of them with an advantage over uh, Trudensky and the fastest man of all on the first leg. Of course, it was Marcel Hirscher, is 1.34 seconds ahead of the American leader, and that's the advantage that he brings into this second leg but Finley no question of a doubt uh, credit where it's due for Dave best GS performance we've ever seen from the American and some very smooth clean technique to go with it yeah he was looking fantastic on his longer giant slalom skis and he was able to take the speed out of the felts and which carried him across the flats faster than anyone we've seen so far 
into the last 15 with the top 30 going in reverse order. This is Linus Strasser of Germany. His advantage over the American leader just four hundredths of a second. Very much improving racer on the World Cup Tour for 2017. But like Chudensky Finley, a slalom specialist rather than a GS racer. I think these steep pitches and rollers on this uh, Kavilia racetrack are uh, pretty helpful to the slalom skiers, maybe more so than the GS specialists. Yeah, and what we can see here from Linus is so dynamic. Look at the bib number 43. The attack from the back award is definitely going to him, but he's not thinking about that down. The Feltson section here is just wanting to go faster on each and every gate, and he's managing to do so as well. The green by point two now. And that green light adding a point one six of a second from the starter to split time two coming out now at the steep turns of the Rominger jump and now heading his way through to the lower third of the challenge. Oh, the light goes green. Now it will be down to strength, power and focus on the last ten turns here. Believe you me, the legs are burning. Strasser is breathing heavily. He needs to dig deep and now dip for the line. And the German misses out by point one nine of a second. Lena Strasser into runner-up position. Yeah, just a little bit of air, but this is down on the main part of the steep. He just seemed to start getting a little bit thrown around at the bottom part of the challenge. So strong at the top, though. Now, uh, Stefan Lutz is another skier that is starting to find real form on the uh, men's tour. Strong slalom and giant slalom racer. An impressive podium in the last giant slalom of the World Cup circuit before heading to these world champs in St. Moritz. Three weeks ago now in Garmisch Partenkirchen. Uh, Lutz took third position in the GS. Of course, it was won by Hirscher there as well. Yeah, Stefan looking strong on each of these outside turns, but Cherensky really did have a flyer down the bottom because these guys aren't doing much wrong until then. Hand down, hip hits the snow. Very slick and quick recovery, but Stefan Lutz could have lost his opportunity here. And what for 214.83, I should say, has uh, Germany second and third, but Chudensky has seen off the best of the Germans now. Yeah, Chudensky skied so well down the bottom section to be so fast. He was just able to just generate the speed and he had no mistakes into the finish. That's why the others are struggling. Uh, Victor Mufajonde, 13th quickest from the first run, point one nine of a second. The advantage continues to grow against the American leader. Muffin Jean Day with uh, two top tens from the World Cup Tour. A little disappointed with his 20th position in the Alpine combined uh, race here last week. But a good green light holding his advantage. Yeah, the mid turn, the French, all and every one of them seems so powerful in the middle part of the turn. But can he keep that power going all the way to the finish? It's now just getting a little bit thrown up in the air in a small slight slide in the top of the turn. Yeah, the time slips away as Mufa Jonde gets tired in the legs. 2.14.50, Chudensky watches on. Mufa Jonde into third position. The USA still lead, and it's Chudensky in giant slalom, not Ted Ligeti who has been the king of this discipline for the last six years. <laughs> A lovely smile from Chudensky there. Now, 12th position from the first leg is Justin Molissier, 0.23 of a second. I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Justin for the first time since he was a junior um, at the Bali press conference uh, earlier this week. What a pleasant young lad, a very quiet and calm misdemeanor, but lets his skiing do the talking, and Mauricier strong on the top section here. Being very aggressive with the gates on the flat, really getting involved in them and classing them out the way. That can help in cutting the line off, but it's a real risky move. 
And just like the race of before Muffet Ronde, it'll be down to the closing turns for Mauricier. The Swiss racer takes it close to the American, and he's beaten now Trudensky by two tenths of a second. Mauricier, who came so close in the Alpine combined competition last week, only having to settle for six, puts down another beautiful performance to take the lead in the men's GS today with only 11 races left to challenge. Yeah, we see the super slow-mo of how far Mauricio's body's inside the panels, and he was able to get each and every one of them out of the way. Five, four, three, Florian Eisat of Italy. And uh, Eisat's there just losing the turning ski on one of the crucial parts in the steep section. Battles well to get the racing line and rhythm into motion once again. Yeah, costly place for Florian there at the bottom of the steep. That looked painful across the flats. And that's the pain we see, 0.5 of a second into the red now. It's getting a little tougher out there for the faster men from the opening run. Visibility is getting a little darker, the cloud is thickening, and the snow is falling in the finish area now, as well as at the top of the course, and Isat drops to 8th position. 0.72 off the leading skier, Mauricier. Let's hear from Felix Neureuter on his thoughts on the racetrack and performance. <laughs> Ein Felix im Angriffsmodus. Wie zufrieden warst du mit well, we seem to have lost that interview. Our apologies. We'll try and bring uh, Felix Neureuter uh, to you as soon as we possibly can. Good to see this young lad finish in 10th position from the first leg. It's at Vucic for Croatia. The Croatian team sorely missing uh, Ivica and Janica Kostelic. But this young lad could be the new breakthrough and the new chapter for Croatian ski racing. Zubcic in the first run seemed to just get grip where no one else was able to get it. But this run, it does the ski seem to be sliding around a little bit. Small feathers at the top of the turns are costly on every one of these turns. That's why we see a point eight seven behind now. Looking a little nervous for me on those opening turns. Finishes strongly, Zubcic. 2.15 at 29, 10th position. Now we can bring you that uh, interview from Felix Neureuter in the finish area. Much better than the first run, Felix tells us. That's his second leg challenge. The break in the race before he left the gate and then the fresh snow uh, for, had fallen on the racetrack, slowing him down just a little. Free day tomorrow for Felix is the next question. And uh, Neureuter plans to uh, take a day off, rest, relax, and hopefully get his back into a more flexible and uh, comfortable position. Back to the ski race now with Tonetti out on course. Ninth fastest man from the first leg. Now the Italian started with 0.26 of a second advantage. Now down to 0.13. Not quite as smooth and as clean in the turn as he was on the first leg, Finley. Just letting the tips come up at the end of each turn, which then struggles to get back to tip, but looking strong to the end here. There's some good final turns. Tonetti dips for the line to 14.47 into second position, but the huge roar from the Swiss crowd is that Mauricier still leads for Team Switzerland. Really seeing the work that the, the racers have to put into the skis in these super slow-mos and how steep the hill is when it takes that long to get back in contact with the snow surface. All looking good for the young racer, Justin Mauricier, leading this men's giant slalom with eight racers left to ski. 
Welcome back to St. Moritz. Now the countdown really does begin. Uh, leading uh, after the 22 races is Justin Mauricier. The total time over the two legs set by the Swiss leader is 2 minutes 14.30 seconds. Now the remaining eight skiers are all within eight tenths of a second of uh, Marcel Hirscher. I believe any one of the next eight could claim a medal. But in these conditions, as the weather starts to suck into the Corvillia racetrack and the snow falling it's tough to bet against Hirscher we've watched this track Finley now very carefully the turns the rhythm the ice the snow it all plays to the Austrians advantage yeah, would you agree I fully agree with you there Nick it really is playing into Marcel Hirscher's hands it's his for the taking but there's some really tough turns we know he's powerful but he needs to keep those skis on the snow here we go, last eight of the men's World Championship giant slalom. Matteo Febvre for Team France. 0.33 of a second is the Frenchman's advantage over the Swiss leader. The Swiss skier had by far the best of the weather conditions as this uh, snowstorm starts to gather as much pace as the racers do in the early turns. And that's the first big mistake from the Frenchman, almost costing him a tenth. Yeah, that flat light, we can see the blue dye beside the racers, but he's really struggling to see the snow surface. Many mistakes, one after the other so far. That's not what he had in his plan at the start at the top. The 25-year-old from Isola 2000 is Alder Dumiel, winner of the second World Cup race on the men's tour, regains his composure and finally, from halfway down, starts to find the rhythm and the flow of this difficult piece today. Yeah, real strong recoveries to keep the green light in his favor after five big mistakes, but he never let the speed go away. One of two French racers in the last eight, uh, Matteo Fevre will have time to give Pantero a course report, but does he have the fastest time? Fevre, oh! Six hundreds off the pace. Young Justin Mauricier has just scalped one of the big names in giant slalom ski racing. Yeah, Favre really took a while to get used to the snow in this run and we see him up at the top, everything loads up so quickly and the tips go into the air and he has to reset the edge and then second part of the felts in here, essentially lying down on the snow, able to push himself up with his left hand to get the pressure back onto the outside turning ski. Wonderful skills from the French racer but the errors are paid for dearly. <laughs> Norway will be next in the gate. Up goes the banner from the Life Christian Horgan fan club. Ten years since Norway last claimed the World Championship gold medal. And that was, of course, Axel Lund Svindal, the man we call the king of the Vikings. Now, Horgan. Brilliant form and consistency on the World Cup GS Tour in the points in all seven of the World Cup races leading up to these championships. Seventh quickest from the first run and over half a second's advantage that he carries forward into the second. He's got a little bit of Svindal and a little bit of Christofferson in his technique. And if you can mix those together the right way, this could be something quite spectacular. Apologies for the snow cover on the lens of the camera on the top part of the course, but there's still... Um, oh! Oh, this storm is slowly turning to a blizzard and giving many of the problems for the skiers at the top of the track. Another mistake from Horgan. If the snow is wet enough to land and stick to the camera, it is wet enough to stick to the goggles. And that's why I believe we're seeing the athletes struggle to see. But Horgan skiing with such power and strength in the upper body, able to power through the gates when he makes the mistakes in the line. This is winter sport. All ski racers know that the weather can play to your advantage or it can make life a little more difficult. But Horgan, who's doing his best to look to work to ski his way through these rough and tough lower turns and keeps a healthy green light, 0.44. Needs to show strength, needs to now drive for the line. Norway are in the lead. It's Horgan, 2.14.02. The conditions continue to deteriorate. The racers still raise their game. This was it. The double cross block in Giant Slam getting the line wrong. The skis hooked up quicker than he expected. And then he just lucky not to straddle that one. Just blasting it out of his way. What great recoveries. <laughs> Oh, 
Life Christian thrilled with that. Another racer achieving a lifetime best in world championship competition. But how long can he hold on to that top spot with six skiers still to go? Three of them representing Austria. Hirscher on screen will be the last of all. Pantero going through his warm-up routine. Christofferson is up there. But here's the first of the remaining six. Just one one hundredth of a second is the advantage uh, for Roland Leitinger. A 25-year-old Austrian, never better than 11th on the World Cup Tour this season. Never better than 6th in his career to date. This could be the big surprise, but Austria has been full of surprises at these championships. Yeah, he just looked inspired on the first run. He looked so explosive. He was able to generate more speed on these top turns, but now running low on the line, we can see the skis flapping around, unable to get the grip. Not quite taking the level of risk that Holgen took down here. That's a good call, Finley. Leitinger just giving the mountain a little too much respect at 900s now. Maybe that is the tactic. A little smoother, a little cleaner. Error free on the steep. Now he looks to change up a gear and drive over the Rominger jump and head for the finish line. A couple of heavy edge sets, but they're working out from this tactical choice of floating the top of the turn and then being strong at the bottom has worked so far. The Stivet is playing to the Austrians' advantage. Drift and punch has been a winning tactical play. into the lead by nearly half a second Roland Leitinger with a huge career best here today at the World Championships he's ecstatic in the finish area and he has every reason to be so yeah we talked about the Austrian setting for a tactical approach and he's just showed us exactly the tactics that work who's the head coach for Team Austria, a bit like Hirsch this week, has come up for a lot of stick in the Austrian press. They treat their skiers like we do our soccer players. Win, we love them. Fail, we hate them. And uh, the Austrians are answering their criticism in the press with their skis and nothing else. Now, this is my tip for the top. Here comes Henrik Christofferson, fifth fastest from the first run. Not the king, but definitely the prince of the Vikings. He really will need to show some magic to steal the lead from Leitinger. And Christofferson is struggling on those top turns 0.25 behind the new Austrian leader yeah Henrik just seems to have a couple of heavy edge sets the skis don't seem to be as clean he was one of the fastest guys at the top in the first run with his mistakes lower down but he's making a few of the mistakes at the top now 0.36 in the red now it was the lower half of the challenge where Christofferson really excelled on the first run but looking at that time difference Finley he will need to fly on the lower half if Christofferson is to grab a medal today yeah the skis just don't seem to be connecting well with the snow every time we look at them they're bouncing around they're not clean and smooth and progressive which we normally see from his giant slalom skis Christofferson uncharacteristically not getting the purchase or the grip on the turning ski he comes strong and late but strong and late is not enough 21407 puts Christofferson into third position and he knows that that ski wasn't smooth wasn't clean wasn't giving that arc turn that Leitinger performed so well he knows it's good he knows it's special <laughs> and I think those words sum it up four to go Sweden, France, and two of the best from Austria. Sweden will be next in the gate. Mats Olsen. Out on course. Olsen now, 0.14 of a second advantage. Looking to prove that sensational second position in the last World Cup GS before these championships and I say it again Finley Olsen's having the same troubles as we saw from Christofferson struggling to get the purchase and struggling to find the op 
optimum race line here. Olsen's yeah. in all kinds of trouble. It's such flat light, so difficult to see the rut and the bump, and they seem surprised when the ski's not giving them the feedback that they're expecting. But he's only 200s behind right now. He managed to take some good speed off of Feltz, and he's getting more balance. He's got the feel of the snow now. 157.99.34 off the pace. That's not good enough. Uh, Olsen could charge into the top flight, maybe grab a bronze, but he's not looking strong enough in these closing turns to steal the lead from the Austrian leader, Roland Leitinger. Brave performance from Olsen. One too many recoveries has the Swedish skier into fourth place. You can see the frustration in his face there. He just didn't get it together from the top turns. And here we look at the super slow-mo hip on the ground, but then not over the front of the ski, and he loses the ski. And just has to give up on that turn and hopefully make it back in the next. Three skiers left to go. France and two Austrians with Austria leading as well. Could this be an Austrian clean sweep or can Pantero spoil the Austrian party and give the French the double. Tessa Worley won the women's race here yesterday. Schurghofer getting a little bit tangled in the net after watching the top turns, but it's Alexi Pantero next to in the gate. The 25-year-old from Courchevel, third quickest after the first run with 0.18 of a second advantage from that first ski earlier today. Top turns are absolutely vital to get the rhythm, feel the snow, and set the pace. Yeah, Pantro gets through the bumps that he can't see with just aggression and determination. But losing some time to be in the red by 800 at this point, at this early point. He shaved a tenth off that advantage, and he's in trouble, just like the Swede. Is it the snow? Is it the visibility? Or is Pantro struggling with this set by Slibnik, the uh, Austrian coach? with the green light there's some nice turns across the flat the pantero we know using the strength in the upper body so strong in the middle of the turn but again ski's not quite getting the grip over the rominger jump there and he's half a second off the pace this will really take some pantalo magic to take the lead here half a second to find pantalo smooth clean he saved a little in reserve it's a strong finish for the frenchman 230.56 pantalo has missed it oh my oh my pantalo drops down into fifth position Leitinger begins the celebrations he's guaranteed a medal and austria could take the clean sweep here lighting at leeds Horgan of norway is second and christopherson also for team norway is third pantro just getting a bit thrown around in these top turns really committing the knee in but getting thrown onto the back seat and we see the frustration the dream of a french double in giant slalom has gone lighting is guaranteed a medal now will it be silver gold or will he stake the bronze because there's two skiers still to challenge philip schurkhofer still the medalist in this race back in 2011 in garmisch partenkirchen can he go one better in 2017 and the older maturer skiers on the men's tech tour at 34 years of age a family man went away from the rigors of international ski competition but schurkhofer and the austrian team have the measure of this second set Beautiful top turns, just getting 100% grip, doing exactly what he wants. A slight float at the top of the turn. The line is high and early for the Feltson. Now he needs to take the speed down onto the flat section here. And the Austrians are coming with a slightly different technique. High drift and punch. Some of the coaches call it a stivet, but it's effective on the steep for the Austrians. All Schurkhofer needs to do now is carry the speed from the efficiency of the upper part through to the flatter lower section. Point to one. He's lost it. And a couple of slight feathers in between these turns as well. Looks to be losing the power. Schurkhofer now can see the finish line. He'll look for the aerodynamic position. He'll dip as he reaches it. And Schurkhofer is out of the medals. And live Christian Horgan of Norway is guaranteed a medal. The Norwegians begin to celebrate. Oh, we thought it would be Christofferson, but Norway 
say take a medal with Horgan. One racer left to go. Absolutely gutted. Phil Schirkhofer threw it away in the last third. Now, here's the replay of Schirkhofer, but there is still another Austrian to ski. The world number one waits patiently for the call from the start marshal. There's the celebration from Horgan. <laughs> oh, a magical moment for one of the hardest working athletes in the game. But we need to settle the goal, Finley. And we need to see this man. 0.53 of a second is a pretty healthy starting advantage for Marcel Hirscher. He took silver to Ligeti in 2015, silver to Ligeti in 2013. Can Hirscher finally claim the World Championship gold in Giant Slalom, claim his eighth World Championship medal of his career? He holds the advantage. Still the right side of the clock, Finley, with 0.53. He did everything right in the first run and so far he's doing everything right again in the second using the upper body strength driving through the middle of the turn gaining the acceleration he's got the grip and he's got the green by 0.74 now this is why we call this man the king of the second run charge not only does he want to win it Hirscher wants to smash it now just needs to keep calm keep this rhythm keep this tactical play going and Hirscher has got the goal now it's down to 0.36 hold your breath if you're cheering for Hirscher because this may slip through his fingers four to go three to go two to go Hirscher into the track and he's there oh Marcel Hirscher finally takes gold the toughest beast the worst of the weather the best technique and style Marcel Hirscher the 2017 giant slalom world champion Leitinger takes the silver Horgan the surprise but well deserved bronze what a spectacular ski for Hersher after 48 hours of criticism for his performance in these championships last week Hersher does what he does best shreds the mountain takes Ligeti's title and a title that he has waited patiently for finally goes to Marcel Hirscher. At one point I thought he'd let it go, eight from home, Finley, I have to admit. It looks so close, but he had the right tactical choices at the key turns on the steeper section of the mountain. He had the speed out onto the flats. He looked like he was losing the power in the legs towards the finish, but he had just enough in reserve. Brilliant. <laughs> he started these world championships thinking that he may not even get to race today. Such was the severity of the gastric flu that has taken so many of the skiers out of these championships. He rested, he kept away from the training hill. And look at Hirscher there, he's absolutely shattered on his knees with appreciation but also with fatigue yeah he left it all on the hill in that second run every bit of energy put into it alpine world ski championship 2017 in st moritz switzerland presented by audi ladies and gentlemen based on the unofficial results we are pleased to present the leaders of today's what a ski race it always promised to be one of the most thrilling shootouts of the championships but nobody expected one or two of the big names to be so far down the field live christian organ a racer who took time out to finish his education but came back after success on the american collegiate tour is the star of the norwegian show today christopherson applause from the crowd the big upset and the Austrians have this uncanny ability of always bringing an upset on the big day. Schmidhofer in the Super G, lighting up with silver in the GS today. Representing Austria, Marcel Hirscher. Well, for how many more years will Marcel Hirscher save the Austrians in the medal count at the end of Olympic Games? And
and World Championships. For me, that was a masterclass in giant slalom racing. Marcel Hirscher is unquestionably the world number one in giant slalom. The Austrian press and media may have deserted their hero, but he's proved them wrong today. Confirmation, the 2017 Alpine Ski Racing World Championships giant slalom men's race goes to Marcel Hirscher of Austria. Leitinger giving the Austrians their first one, two of these championships. And Horgan, ahead of Christofferson, takes bronze for Norway. Marcel Hirscher goes into Sunday's slalom race as the favourite for double gold. And if he can ski anything like he skied here today, there's absolutely no reason why not. Hirscher is the king in St. Moritz yet again. Finley, a last word from you. The disappointments, Christofferson, Pantero again, bottling it on the second leg, and of course, Neureuter. Yeah, the conditions just got harder towards the end. Well, sorry to interrupt, Finley. My apologies. Well, Quick word from Hirscher in the finish of area. This race, leading the World Cup standings, being on the podium at every single race. And now you did it. You have your first GS World Cup title. How does it feel? Very tired I am at the moment, but uh, unbelievable feelings. One of the toughest races uh, we had this season so far, and uh, I'm very thankful for this. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't look like he has the energy uh, for any more than just that. Such a humble man went away from the mountain. Such a great sportsman.